Today's video, we're looking at the Atrim Tactical Gion. This one is a really sleek design. It's got a black blade to it, it's double edged. Take a look at some specs, up close looks, and of course, cut testing. Overall length, we're looking at 26 and one half inches of this double edged blade. This is counterbalanced by a six and one half inch handle. We're gonna see features on this one. We have two slabs on this of G10. This is a full tang design, and we have a short guard that you're gonna see in the up close looks. This one has two edges to it, or it's really just double edged. We have a cross section on here as well that you will see on traditional Gions. And this sword is primarily used for, really primarily for thrusting and of course, secondary cutting. Something to also mention that you folks at home might enjoy is this also has a extended pommel. Again, this is a single piece of steel making this highly durable, which I really like a lot. And if you do um, also want to go into more smashing with the pommel on the forehand or the backhand side, if that's something that you'd like as a feature or even just aesthetically, that is something that the Atrium Tactical Gion offers. How does it feel in the hand? Well, I'm going to have a little bit of footage of me training with this as well, but from the other Gions that I've worked with in the past from LK Chen and other distributors like Hanwei, other sword companies as well, this one is up there. This is definitely a price point one that's going to be low maintenance, um, a really fun uh, addition to your collection if you're looking for swords that are more nimble and have just really more thrusting ability to them. Obviously the cutting ability is there as well, but it's really agile in the hand, it's easy to maneuver with, the grip is solid. Talking about some features that I enjoy on the Tactical Gion sword, this is a two pound sword, which is not uncommon for a, a balanced sword, a well-balanced sword. And the actual point of balance is gonna be three inches from the guard which is actually really solid for a cut and thrust sword. So if you're looking at something that's going to be low maintenance, it's going to be balanced well for how a Gion would be balanced, really any most single-handed swords, then this may be a sword that you want to add to your collection. I like it a lot. It's primarily a thrusting sword. So there's a lot of grace and precision involved in this. Obviously you have the cuts as well and parries and things like that. And just for moving around with it in hand, especially for it being very humid out here as well, my hand's not getting slippery. Um, of course, you want to have proper training, but my hand's not getting slippery. I like the shape of the handle as well. So if you did want to add gloves, if you were doing some type of cut testing, that would be a really good option for safety. But as far as the balance point and the weight, it's not overbearing. It's definitely has some agility to it. It's very nimble in the hand, easy to move around the thrusting positions, easy to move on the parries. If you're going into different cuts into thrusts as well, I really enjoy how this feels in hand. Getting specific on the blade steel, it's a 9260 high carbon steel. I mentioned it before, but we have a diamond cross section. So you're gonna see some traditional features on this blade, except it's just a little bit more modern with the black coating and the G10 handles. Again, full tang design. Um, you can, if needed, with Allen keys, you can adjust the handle scales if you wanted to. Um, I don't anticipate you need to at all, but just so you know that, um, and it is, again, a single piece of steel with a guard. You're going to see shorter guards like this with the Gion because sometimes this is used in saber grip. Um, but a full grip or even a modified saber grip as well is going to be very comfortable in the hand. Right, looking at the sheath, this is a textured fiberglass sheath. So it's really going to feel like hard plastic. And speaking as well about the handle, just like all, well, majority of the APOC designs that I've reviewed in the past, you're gonna have two dimples on the handle. You're gonna have one on each side. It's exactly the same on each side. And then the notches on the top of the sheath where the molly attachment is for your belt, that's gonna click right into place. Um, it's a solid amount of retention. It's not something that I would do anything silly with, like hold it upside down. But as far as it clicking into place for you to display it on a sword stand, or if you did want to attach this to a belt as it's shown, as it's, as it's listed, you can do. Um, then this would be a great thing to really have because you have the utility of it. Um, but even just displaying this on a sword stand looks really cool. Uh, and then really specifically as well, you can wrap paracord through here as you're gonna see in the up close looks. You can wrap paracord through here if you want to strap this to a backpack. You also have the ability to do this with a thinner belt or cord um, on really any attachments up here. There's really four, there's six slots for the holes and there's four slots if you don't want to for um, a, a really thin belt or even a backpack strap. So it's really compatible with that. The other thing I like about it too is it being the, the fiberglass sheath and it's somewhat speckled. It's not a straight black. It doesn't really matter if you get a couple scratches on it because it's supposed to be more utilitarian and more modern in that sense, which is why it has the black coating. 
Uh, it draws out nicely, slight pull will give you that, and you can click it back in. No rattling, but um, really the retention is solid. It matches the sheath to the actual handle, and uh, I'm not worried about it sliding out at all. all right, so what I'd like to do for you now is what I like to do through my own martial arts training is show you how these blades move and how they look in space. So I'm gonna move around with this sword a little bit. There's a little bit of footage of me working through different thrust positions, different guard positions, with the intention of you being able to see the sword in motion. We also have cut testing as we always do in our videos here on Cult of Athena. Let's take a look at that footage of moving around the sword with the APOC Tactical Geon. Alright, we took a look at some movement with this sword, with the APOC Tactical Geon. We took a look at some movement through the guard positions, a little bit of cutting, a little bit of thrusting positions as well, and just seeing what this sword has to offer. Let's take a look at some up-close looks of this one in the sheath and out of the sheath. And of course, we're also gonna look at some cut testing. We had water bottles this time because we're out of tatami for the time being, just to show the edge quality being functionally sharp. It has a pull to it. Let's take a look at that footage. All right, thanks for joining me for this review of the Angus Trim Designed APOC Tactical Geon Sword. I've done a handful of these in the past of the, of the APOC line. People seem to really like these a lot, which is why we want to offer this review to you. If you want to buy this one, click the link in the description below this video. It'll take you to callwithathena.com to pick this one up today to add to your collection. It's really solid, um, feels really good in the hand, uh, and I really like this as far as a modern interpretation of a Gian. Subscribe to the channel, like this video, comment below what you want to see in reviews coming soon, and I'll see you in the next one.